Mailbag is back. This is what you guys have been most requesting for us to come back to, answering your questions about audio and audio related issues. And without any further ado, let's get started. We've got a question here from David, who is actually going to win a free VMIC D4. And the question is this, how do I match the sound of a lav to the sound of a shotgun microphone. One, a shotgun is going to have a lot more of the room involved in it. It's a bigger pickup, especially, especially on the wide shot. So that shotgun is gonna sound very distant. That lav always, always is gonna sound like it's six inches away from you, right? So no matter what, they're gonna sound different. Here's the thing I suggest. Don't try to make them sound the same. Either select one in post and just go with it, or embrace the, the unique characteristics of the boom. So if you're in a wide shot and it's supposed to be a wide and you're not supposed to feel like you're in the story yet, and you're supposed to add camera perspective, like you're shooting from across the street, well then the audio should, should sound far away. It should sound like it's on the boom, but at a distance and not six inches away because that perspective is all off. A boom is always gonna sound like it has perspective in a scene, which is where the creativity of sound mixing and sound recording of dialogue really kind of comes into play here. A lav doesn't have a lot of creativity. Now we've got a question from Libsynth and that is this. What are some tips and tricks for recording audio in the rain? Not only to rainproof your gear, but how to also avoid the rain sound on the gear. When you think of rain in a movie, odds are they're using a rain machine and CGI in front of the actors so that it feels like they're in the middle of the rain. But in reality, rain is in the background, actors, fake rain. They may be doing a drench effect on the actor, actors themselves to make it look like they're wet, but odds are they're not in the rain. Secondly, when they are in the rain, you're gonna hear the rain sound. And the reason for that is you visually see rain, you wanna hear rain. If you have a sound like a faucet or some kind of downspout on a house where it's just pouring all the rain coming in from the, the roof, you may put something called hog's hair at the bottom of that. So it's gonna hit the hog's hair, dissipate the rain and absorb any kind of sound that may happen and just kind of dampens any kind of rain sound at all. You can't really get rid of rain unless you're gonna do full on ADR. And most likely you're not gonna be doing full on ADR because that's a lot of extra work and a lot of extra cost. Now in terms of the other parts of the question, the rain proofing of the gear, uh, you're gonna look for a blimp uh, kind of setup that is rain proof. They do exist. You're gonna put your microphone inside of a blimp and then you're gonna do like a rain cover over that. Well, hey, before we go any further in this video, I wanna take a small section of your time to remind you, we are always pulling comments down from the comment section below for questions for the episodes. So if you have audio issues or general filmmaking questions, drop them down in that comment section below. If your comment is selected for an episode, you're gonna win a free VMIC D4. That's a $99 value. That's like, uh, well, it's yours because you were selected. We've got a question now from Charlie, and this is an old school question. How do you make film cameras quiet? Fans on digital cameras are a firmware thing, but the motors on Super 16 cameras are very loud. How do you deal with that? That's a great question. And it's actually a very simple answer. Use the right camera. You're gonna want something like the RE SR2 or SR3 that are designed for sound recording. Further, what you can do is blimp your camera. Now on the very big cameras, it's a proper blimp that seals up the camera. But for a lot of these Super 16 kind of cameras, it's more like a makeshift kind of a blimp. People in the olden days when they shot a lot more Super 16 would take furniture blankets or sound pad blankets and throw them over the camera operator all together to kind of isolate that sound inside of there. Our next question is from Pound Syndrome. And that is, how do you deal with challenging crew members on set? Let's take a look at this from two different angles here. One, personality issues of conflict, or two, they're lazy. Number one, personality issues. If it's a one day shoot, it's a TV commercial, I'm just day playing. If I've got personality problems, just hold your tongue. It's the easiest thing you can do. You come off looking great because you were not the explosive member. You just kind of went with the flow and everyone thought you were a great team member. That's good on you. Let's talk about the other side. Let's say they're a lazy crew member. If you observe it, other people are observing it too. So hopefully they don't get the call in the future. If it's your department and you're in charge of hiring the person, anyone can learn a lot of skills on a film set. Personality goes a long way. So during the hiring process, just always remind yourself 
is the person answering questions in a manner of which I would want to just be with them when we're in the rough of it. If the answer is no or any hesitation, move on to another candidate. Well, that's going to wrap it up for us here at Mailbag. I'm Andrew from DD Microphones. Thank you for watching.